What's up, creative minds? I am Serenjo, and this is your photo chef. I am a UK based photographer and videographer as well. Now, we all take good pictures, but what separates a great picture from a good picture is only a few things. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you one of them. And if you have realized when you see great pictures on the internet, your attention is immediately drawn to the subject, your attention is drawn to the point of interest of the said image. Now, I'm going to be sharing with you five different ways to do this in Photoshop. There are a lot of ways to do this, of course, using other softwares, but today I'm going to be sharing with you five different ways to do that in Photoshop. Now, this is my first video on this YouTube channel. Um, please hit the like button and smash the subscribe button and be part of this community. Be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section below. Let's keep this um, interactive. Without wasting much of your time, let's jump into Photoshop. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we're in Photoshop now. I've got Photoshop fired up here already for us. And we've got some pictures that we're going to be working with. So we've got one, two, three, four pictures, four pictures in all. And we're going to learn five methods. So method one, let's use this picture. Right, so it is by using the curves adjustments layer. Right, so go ahead and duplicate your layer or just make, make a copy of everything you've done. Control Shift Alt E or just select the top layer and then create your adjustment layer, your curves adjustment layer. So you can create from going here and clicking on curves. It's going to create an adjustment layer right here for you. Now, if you don't want that, if you want to apply the curves adjustment on your layer directly, it is possible. Just select the layer you want to apply the curves on. And the shortcut is Ctrl plus M. Ctrl plus M is going to bring this up, the curves um, panel up, if I should put it that way. Um, and then you make your changes. But mind you, when you make adjustments like this, it's going to affect your layer. As you can see, it affects it permanently. If you don't want that happening, which we don't want. So let me go ahead and take that back. go ahead and take that back right which we don't want to happen you can convert this layer to a smart object now if you convert a layer to a smart object any effects that you apply on it say the curves adjustment layer you'll be able to make changes later on you'll be able to delete it later on if you don't want so control m mind you this layer is now um, a smart object so Control M. When I make adjustments and I click OK, you realize that it affects it here. So I can toggle it on and off. So off, back on. Right. All right. That's just by the way. Right. So I'll like to use this one instead. So I'll go here and I'll click on the curves adjustment layer. So you can either bump this up. Yeah. Just push a point here like that and before, after, before, after. Now what you realize is, is it's affecting the whole image. That is not what we want. Um, so to make sure it's affecting only your subject and your subject is standing out. Um, you can select the layer mask and use this shortcut Control I or just invert the layer mask basically. Grab a brush, which is B, the shortcut is B or select a brush, make sure it's soft, bring the hardness all the way down to zero, select a good size, you can increase the size or decrease the size by the brackets on your keyboard, right? Make sure the color is set to white, now if you've got any color set there, what you can do is just hit D on the keyboard and it should reset everything. If you want to swap it around, it's X. So hit D, make sure it's white on the foreground. Yeah, or just go there and then set it to white and then brush back your subject. So brush it back like that. Yeah, brush the areas you want to pop. And um, when you're done, subject should stand out. So in this sense, this is my subject. 
right so after doing that toggle it off and on and that's the before and after as you can see your subject is standing out attention is drawn immediately to your subject when somebody looks at your picture um let me take it a step further for you guys so duplicate the curves adjustment layer select the layer Control j it duplicates it make sure the layer um, mask is selected Control i and it's going to invert it now what what this does is the effects we did is now affecting um the background now select your curves adjustments double tap double click and then draw a curve like that <clears throat> now what this is doing is it is making sure the background is dark so we're making the background dark and we're making our subject brighter um so let me go ahead and group this i'll select both of them Control g to group him and when i toggle it off and back on off on off on you realize your subject is actually standing out this is something you can employ in your pictures and um, it's going to elevate your pictures a lot off and on obviously when you're doing it on your pictures you should take your time you should really take your time and then make sure the brush is done properly now another way another variation with the curves adjustment layer is um after drawing your curves oh i forgot to delete this um smart object it doesn't matter anyway it's all right we can leave it like that right so um after drawing after after drawing the curves like that um i can delete the layer mask just select the layer mask tap delete select your layer go to select subject and you realize that photoshop is going to make a selection around your subject now photoshop does a good job at doing that if you don't like the selection photoshop does just select your lasso two by just tapping l on the keyboard i like using shortcuts i'm very sorry but when, whenever i use a shortcut i'll make sure it's um, down there so you don't get lost in it so hold shift yeah to add a selection draw a selection around the areas you want to include in your selection and after that make sure the curves adjustment layer is selected and click this icon right here boom you've got it on all right then you can duplicate it you can duplicate it and then double click invert this one and Control i i'll select everything group them before after before after right so that's the first way S still on the curves adjustment layer you can go to curves adjustment layer again yeah and this time instead of bringing this part of the curves up you can just bring in the whites and highlights like that and if you think it's washing out your image and you're losing them um, you're losing a lot of contrast you can just bring contrast back into your image that way yeah before after and then same thing you can select your brush make sure this one is inverted select a control i inverted make sure it's black select a white brush and then brush your image or your subject sorry back in your image yeah and after doing that before after you can go ahead duplicate it make sure take this back and take it down up remember that can affect your colors yeah so you might want to work in your colors if it does work on your colors you could just go to camera or desaturate the colors if it's making them too saturated or you can just go here and then hue saturation and decrease your colors after that control i when i select them both group them before after right so it's the same method same curves adjustment layer just um different variations yeah right so that's that's for curves let's move on to number two now number two or method number two we're going to be using the levels adjustment layer yeah so make sure the layer is selected go to adjustment layers select levels yeah and then bring this part in Make sure you're not clipping. 
you can just hold alt and when you bring it in when you hold alt on the keyboard and you're bringing it in and you see these colors it means it is clipping yeah so you don't want to do too much i'm going to leave it there i mean you could always decrease your opacity and i'm going to bring this part in to bring some black spark in the image while holding the alt and um before after before after same thing i can select this layer go to select subject and it's going to make a, se a selection around your subject i'm going to select this one make sure i've deleted the layer oh yeah when, when you hit delete on there it kind of deletes the selection from it which is not bad so if it does that just just make sure um, you, you, if you want the effect to affect, if you want the effect to affect, that's like a rhyme, <laughs> right? If you want the effect to affect um, your subject alone, which is what we're aiming to achieve, make sure it is white instead of black. Over here, you can see our subject selection is black. So just hit it, control I, and it's going to invert it. Oh, oops. Let me deselect by control D and then select it, control I before after before after that's great you can take it up a notch by um, just duplicating the levels and um, bringing this part back and sending this down to make sure it's dark then before and after before and after but if you can notice the effect is affecting our subject we don't want that to affect our subject so select the layer mask Control I and it's going to invert it and it's going to affect only the background. So when you group it together, select them both, control G, before and after, before and after, before and after. Now look at that. I mean, look at how the subject is popping. Look at that. Right? If you think the effect is too strong, go ahead and decrease the opacity. And there we have it. So that's method number two that's method number two i've got the microphone right here <laughs> right so the third one i'm going to use the same image the third method is uh, to clean distractions from your image so i mean the making of a great image starts from um in camera right so while taking the picture you should make sure you take the pictures correctly you take the pictures with the right exposure and all that i believe you know that already but what i'm going to tell you today is make sure you frame your subjects well if you have a lot of people walking in the background and all that it is going to affect your image unless that's the look you're going for you might want to move your subject somewhere else just change your camera angle change your subject's position if you want to use the same environment uh, move the people from the background if you can do that in most cases you cannot do that so just make sure you change your angles you play with your angles and you make sure the background is as clean as it can be when i was taking this picture i, I took this picture in derby um i could have taken some time and cleaned all these from here uh, well i didn't do that um so i'm going to do it now yeah so select the layer Control j just to make a copy of your layer zoom in Control plus zoom in and uh, i'm going to do this with the patch two yeah the shortcut is j as you can see there j so j select the patch to select the imperfection you want to delete and drag it to somewhere clean and boom before after before and after um if you do it along the edges make sure you move it along the edges like that and that should work yeah so take your time go ahead and clean up the whole image clean up as much mess as you can okay Make sure the area you try to replace with is similar. Oops. If, you, if you're doing it, it's not working, you can just 
do it gradually. Yeah. Oops. Now take your time and have fun with this too. And you realize the background is looking much cleaner before and after, before and after. Now, if you take your time and you do this well, by cleaning all these structures, you draw attention to your subject and um, it makes your subject stand out. Um, not a lot of distractions in the background and all that. Um, so that is that. Let's move on to the next step, the next method, I mean. I'm going to be using this, this one right here. And um, it is to add a vignette. By adding a vignette to your background, um, to, your, to your image, a black vignette, I mean, by adding a vignette to your, 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 your image, you kind of draw attention directly to your subject when somebody um, looks at your um, portrait, so when somebody looks at your picture, your image, however you want to put it, it draws attention directly to your model or your subject. Let me show you what I mean. So go ahead and select your topmost layer. If you've got a lot of layers, Control Shift Alt E, and it's going to merge everything you've done to the top. Go to Filter, Camera Raw, and um, scroll down to Effects. And there you have it. That's your vignette. So play with this, move things around, find what, be what, what works best for you. Hit OK and before and after. Create a layer mask on it. Make sure you have your brush tool selected. The shortcut is B. Make sure you've got a black color selected. Remember, if you select, if you brush white on black, you're trying to reveal. And if you brush black on white, you're trying to hide. So we're going to brush black on white. Why? Because we're trying to hide um, the vignette from our subject, yeah? So increase the brush size, make sure it's a soft brush by right clicking and making sure the hardness is set all the way to zero and brush your subject back in. Just brush like that and before and after, before and after. And by adding a vignette to your image, you draw your subject's attention, your subject's focus directly to your image. Now compare this to that. If that's the look you're going for, if you don't mind having vignettes in your images, if you think it's too much, you can of, of course turn it down to your liking. You can start adding vignettes to your images and um, it is going to help make your subjects pop and stand out. So let's use this image right here. I'm going ahead, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and select the image. I'll go ahead, select the image, control J and um, right so i'm going to go to filter camera raw now this method is by desaturating the colors you have in the background and by desaturating the colors you have in the background you you draw attention you draw focus to your subject yeah so um, i'm going to go to color mixer right here go to the saturation panel um, saturation tab and I see a lot of greens in my background, so I'm going to decrease the greens. If you want, you can take everything out. I'm, I'm not going to take everything out for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to take the yellows out as well, but I'm going to leave some yellows in there. Now, what you realize is when you do this for green repixes, it takes out yellow, which means it takes out yellow from the skin because you've got reds and yellows in the skin tones. It takes out yellow from the skin. The, the model here uh, um, is wearing um, a yellow dress and you realize it's taking all the yellows from the dress. I'll show you how to fix that in a bit. Don't worry about it. So hit OK. Go to <clears throat> Select Subject. Photoshop is going to make a selection around your subject. We can, um, we can see that this selection is not perfect. You can go ahead and refine it, but for the perfect <coughs> But for the purpose of this tutorial, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it like that, right? So make sure you have a selection like that. Hit the layer mask icon and it's going to make, um, create a layer mask. But we can realize um, it's affecting your subject instead of the background. Simple, select the layer mask, control I, before and after, before and after. 
by doing this, if if your background colors are um, desaturated or slightly desaturated, and your subject is standing out, I mean obviously this is color grade on its own. You can add this to your color grade. Um, you can add this to your color grade routine if I should stay. If that's the style you're going for. If that's not the style you're going for, that's fine. You've got one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter if you want to use all five in one picture. It doesn't matter. You can just go ahead and use all five methods I've shown you in one picture. Just make sure to decrease the opacity slider if you think it's too much. So one, two, three, four images. Now I've, I've already edited these images, color graded them and um, posted them. I'm going to um, I'm going to be releasing color grading tutorials on some of these images. I'm going to be releasing a video on this one, and um, I think I've got the final the final picture of this one. I'll pop it up on your screen so you have a look at it. And I have the final of this as well. And um, I've not edited this image at all. Anyway, so that's five methods for you. Thank you for watching this video to the end. I hope you picked up a thing or two. Now, if you like this video well enough, please hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and be part of this community. Now, if you didn't like this video at all, please smash the subscribe button as well, because I mean, I'm going to be releasing a whole lot of videos. This is only my first video on this YouTube channel, so there is more to come. And I believe I'm going to definitely release something that you'll be interested in. On this channel, I am going to be doing a lot of Photoshop tutorials, Lightroom tutorials, Capture One as well. Um, maybe even Premiere Pro sometimes and um, I'll be releasing a lot of behind the scenes and camera gear reviews as well so show some support please hit the like button smash the subscribe button be part of this community if you have any other methods to make your subject pop and stand out I'd like to know please let me know down in the comment section below if you have any questions at all please leave it in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible you can check out my instagram at i am serenjo and my website is www.serenjophotography.com it was nice having you here i'll see you in the next video remember to stay creative keep smiling